Growth Bootcamp podcast. I'm Holly Hopley, the CEO. I'm Liana Wolf, the administrator. And today I'm excited for today's episode and guest because um, we get to hear Andrea Rudy's second birth, um, her story. Um, During the summer, we got to hear the story of her first birth and she was pregnant. And now we get to hear the second one. So it'll be super fun. Um, I always love hearing these types of stories. Um, But will you just briefly introduce yourself again for people who maybe haven't met you before? Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. This is going to be fun. Um, My name is Andrea Rudy. I have a sapling birth, and I'm a certified birth boot camp instructor. So I teach classes in the northern Colorado area, and I also teach online private classes. So we're having a lot of fun with that. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Whoops. Sorry, I just totally lost my uh lost my headphones. <laughs> um <laughs> all right, now that I can hear you guys again. Okay. Um I want to know during your pregnancy like how you felt like um like baby number 2. Like what were your feelings? What were your thoughts? Did you have concerns about adding a second baby? <laughs> all those things. Yeah, well, it definitely felt a lot different because at the time, my husband was managing an office for his company in Mexico City. So we were still living there for most of my pregnancy. Um, So there's just a lot of like traveling back and forth between our home here in Colorado and our apartment in Mexico City. Um, there, There was a big difference in what I was doing day to day, too. So with my first baby, I was still working full time throughout the entire pregnancy. This time around, you know, like I'm a stay at home mom. I'm running errands. Um, we didn't drive anywhere in Mexico City. Everything was walking or the bus. <laughs> so I did a ton of walking, um, which actually I think set me up really nicely mm-hmm. for getting that nice exercise in. But um, it just felt very different because you don't when you're living in a different country and you know that it's temporary it doesn't quite feel like home entirely so we mm-hmm. were really comfortable we had a great community but it didn't feel like I was settled necessarily um and I cr- I craved that feeling for most of my pregnancy um, I can see that yeah yeah just kind of partly nesting but also it's just kind of human nature you just want to have your safe spot that you can raise your family Mm -hmm. Um, and you also had a young toddler yes you were (laughs) bringing along (laughs) yeah so he's just a busy busy boy he's um he's a super super sweet kid so it wasn't a huge struggle during pregnancy postpartum was a little different story but that's another story for another day (laughs) um so yeah I just did everything with my toddler you know taking care of the house, running around town, um, going to different activities and things. So, but it was also kind of fun because we were in adventure mode, right? This Mm -hmm. is our big family adventure for the next probably few years that we'll have. So that part is kind of fun. It's kind of special to have that experience. So different, but cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Okay, so for your second birth, uh, first off, when was your due date and when did you actually deliver? Um, my due date was August 23rd and I delivered on the 17th. So it was exactly one week early again for my mm-hmm. second. I was going to say, wasn't that your first? Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. yep. I did not expect that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... Where did you plan to deliver? And then you talked a little bit about what you did while you were pregnant, but did you, what did you do specifically to prepare? Okay, good questions. So we were really back and forth about where and how we wanted to deliver. Um, I knew I didn't prefer to have a hospital birth, although that wasn't out of the question for me. But if I, we could, I wanted to have a home birth. And like, that was my first initial thought. We also weren't entirely sure if baby was going to arrive while we were still living in Mexico. 
or after we had moved home. So initially I thought maybe I could have a home birth in Mexico, <laughs> which in um, there, that's even more unheard of than it is here in the States. Oh, like wow. that is very, very uncommon. Um, but I did find there are midwives in that area and that can, that is a possibility for at least in the Mexico city area, that is a possibility. So I had thought about that, but we decided to move home a month before my due date. Um, so from there I was planning, like, do we want to do at home in Colorado or do we want to do a birth center? Cause there's a really incredible birth center here in Fort Collins. Um, home would still have been my preference, but the living situation was just kind of complicated when we moved back and we weren't in our house. So I didn't feel super peaceful about doing a home birth in a place that's not my own. Mm -hmm. So we decided to go with the independent birth center that's here in Fort Collins. Um, they have a team of midwives. They're like 15 minutes away from where we're living and they're awesome. They are really, really awesome. So I felt really good about that. My husband felt good about that. Um, so we worked with them and they helped me um, with my prenatal appointments and stuff. Some of them I would travel back for here in Colorado. And then some of them, they would do like a remote appointment with me, which is really nice that they had that option. Things went really, really smoothly for my whole pregnancy. Um, when I, when I was pregnant, I actually had been training for a 5k, which for me, I'm like not a runner type person. So that had been like a big deal for me. 5k is like a huge goal. <laughs> um, but I decided after I found out I was pregnant, I decided to keep going with it through my first trimester. So I was doing a lot of like running and jogging and just good movement throughout my first trimester, um, that set me up really well. I feel like for my whole pregnancy, I just felt more in shape. I felt stronger this second time around, probably also because, you know, chasing a toddler around. <laughs> um, so I felt really good. I didn't have terrible morning sickness and anything like that. Um, and then one thing that I started right away when whenever we travel back is I found a really amazing chiropractor and so I was doing that very consistently when I could you know when when mm -hmm. we were in Mexico right. um, I was doing lots of consistent chiropractic care and that was also awesome for me but one kind of funny thing that was a coincidence is birth boot camp um so I had taken the comprehensive course when I was pregnant with my first, and I actually was able to access and review that class during my second pregnancy, not necessarily because I was pregnant, but because we were training for class, for teaching classes mm -hmm. yep. and uploading things. So <laughs> I got- That was perfect to, timing. <laughs> yeah. I got to have kind of a refresher course, and that was really, really good for me to I think because my brain is in instructor mode a mm -hmm. lot of the time it was good for me to make myself switch and be in mom mode as well of like this isn't about my business this isn't about my students this is about me and my birth now mm -hmm. what do I want out of it how can I prepare myself mentally for what's coming so yeah that was really awesome to be able to switch back into that student mode myself. Mm -hmm. No, I love that you brought that up. Cause I think like, that's a question I get even as a doula is people like, are like, well, do you, did you have a doula? Like, because you are one. And it's like the same thing. It's like, yeah, like, cause I can't be in, I can't doula myself. And I think that's the same thing, you know, when, when you're pregnant with, it's not your first. So it's like, you already know a lot of things, you know, and especially if you are a birth professional, you know, a ton, but at the same time, it's different when you can just focus and be the, the expecting mom who needs to prepare for their birth instead of like the instructor or the doula. So yeah. I love that. 
if anything, that was like something I was nervous about is that I was going to get like kind of cocky, you know, mm -hmm. where I was like, oh, I totally, I know exactly how to do all of right. this. Yeah. And I was actually nervous. I was going to think that way. So I, I really worked hard to not let myself feel too sure of everything and to remember that you just don't quite know what to expect and to prepare for all scenarios and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's important. Um, okay, well, like, tell us how did the birth go? Give us all the fun details. What happened? <laughs> okay. All right, we'll start at the beginning. So we did move home. It was exactly one month before my due date. So I was super pregnant on a plane, which was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um, but everything went great. We got settled here where we're living in Loveland. And um I had in my mind that I was still going to go past my due date, even though I delivered early my first time, I didn't want to have an expectation for something that would set me up for disappointment. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> so I really, I really tried to just convince myself we were going to go a little bit late. So anything, you know, any changes that I was feeling like I started feeling more pressure towards the end of my pregnancy I'd get more Braxton Hicks um, I even started kind of prodromal labor like a week or so before in the evenings I'd feel um, a contraction or two and I really worked hard to just kind of ignore it work through it not really take it too seriously um, I was listening to a bunch of birth stories right before because, you know, of course you want to encourage yourself and learn mm -hmm. on all the things. And one of my favorite bloggers had shared her really recent birth story and she, she lives on like a homestead and she talked about how during her laboring day, she knew she like woke up in labor in the morning, but she said all day long she just ignored it and she wanted to ignore it until she couldn't and mm -hmm. that phrase really like stuck in my head the weeks leading up so the the week leading up to it I had those few contractions in the evening and then I'd just go to bed and sure enough they'd fizzle out so it wasn't like a big deal and then I woke up that Thursday morning and I had lost some bloody show. So that made me pretty excited. <laughs> yep, that's a good thing. Excited. Um, and I had like plans that day. Like I had a chiropractor appointment. I had a midwife appointment already. Um, I was going to make dinner for my mother-in-law. We were all going to have dinner together. And I was like, you know what? We're just going to have a normal day. Because who knows? This might fizzle out too. I don't want to get all wound up and tire myself out and then nothing mm -hmm. so um, my husband did work from home that day I was like just in case just in case yep <laughs> yep um so I was having contractions maybe every hour or so and it was they were really mild they were pretty easy to work through so I <laughs> made maybe it was kind of a foolish decision but I made the decision to drive myself to my chiropractor appointment <laughs> in the morning and I was like hey guys I might be in pre-labor <laughs> so they did a few like pressure point things they adjusted me a little they were just really gentle about it but we were joking that like maybe this would just send me into active labor <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> immediately um it didn't happen immediately um so I went home and then they, those contractions just kept kept getting a little bit closer together, a little bit closer together, but still it was like maybe 45 minutes apart, really easy to just talk and work through. So I, I really did try to just ignore them, but it's really hard not to get excited mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> when it's not completely going away. You're like, well, this could be it. Um, I went to my midwife appointment and I told them, you know, I'm having 
contractions. They're pretty sporadic. They're not really anything that feels active or anything. And they were just very, they just told me to work with my intuition. They're like, you know, you're right. It could just still fizzle out. And then we might be looking at a couple more weeks. But they did say because I had bloody show. They were mm-hmm. like, it'll probably happen sooner rather than later. Yeah. But just trust your gut. And if you feel like things are moving fast, you can call us. But otherwise, just go home and relax and live your normal life. So that was pretty awesome. They're just so they're so awesome to work with in encouraging you to trust your own body and they trust your own body. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I did end up making dinner for everybody. We had some friends come and we all just, I was like cooking pot roast and we were all chatting and laughing. And I'd say probably like around dinner time, my, I felt like I had to kind of pause through some of those contractions, <laughs> which, you know, it's kind of funny when there's a whole bunch of people around and you're like leaning over mm-hmm. the counter. You're like, hold on a second. <laughs> They're like, um, do you need to go do something about that? It's like, no, no, I'm going to ignore it until I can't anymore. <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. So um, dinner was great. My midwives had said if that if if Peter was up my first child, my toddler, if my first boy was up and running around and being busy, then my body might not feel relaxed enough to go into mm-hmm. active. They're like, you know, put him to bed and then see how you feel later tonight. And I was like, I bet that's exactly what's gonna happen. Yep, I've seen that and, before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure enough. So um, we put him to bed and I was just trying really hard not to get all worked up. You know, I just really wanted to be calm and not use up a lot of energy. Uh, So we were just going to try to go to bed. We set up a movie in our room and and crawled in bed and we just sat and we watched a movie together. Um, And still those contractions were still like not a big deal for me to just work through and kind of, kind of ignore a little bit and put, put them aside. So I lay down and started to go to sleep and I turned over and I heard this, like this, like ka-chunk sound inside my body. (laughs) And I was like, and I was like, Oh, that was, that was weird feeling. I wonder if maybe (laughs) just like twisted a little bit and like, picked a little and I just laid there you know and I was like oh I need to get up and go to the bathroom before I go to sleep so I stood up and then all of my water came out mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was water breaking yeah. which is funny mm-hmm. that's totally not what was on my radar because that didn't happen until I was about to go into transition with Peter so mm-hmm. I was even thinking that might be the first thing that happened <laughs> yeah um, but that made me, um, that made me get a little bit worked up. I'd say like I had a big adrenaline rush from that. I don't know if that was mental or just physical or what, but I was like shaking and breathing hard. And I was like, Oh my gosh, here we go. <laughs> I don't have, I don't have that cushion from my fluid anymore. So this could get kind of intense. Um, I was ready and prepared, but I wasn't ready, ready. Yeah. Know? I was like, this could be ever ready, ready. Like you might think you're totally prepared. And yet when something like that happens, it's like that switch flips and you're like, wait, but wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait a second. This is happening now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I really had to work to kind of, to kind of get a grip (laughs) because you don't want to be going into this all nervous and anxious. You know, that's literally what we had been preparing not to do. So um, I turned on some of my like super peaceful worship music and I was like, okay, just breathe and, you know, work through these, these are contractions now. So you just need to breathe and start vocalizing a little bit. And I kind of, I got got myself under control a little bit and 
things started getting more consistent and feeling less chaotic, you know. Um, but I'd say like within 30 minutes, I started feeling nauseous. And that was a feeling I had had right before transition. So then I kind of got nervous again. I was like, whoa, this is really going fast. I didn't expect that either. <laughs> like, do we need to leave now? You know, I was talking to my doula over the phone and she just encouraged me like, you'll know, you'll know when it's the right time to go in. So we decided to just go ahead and go. Um, I was like, this, this isn't feeling like a great thing to do at home. If we're going to get somewhere before I start mm -hmm. really before I go into transition, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, the drive was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I knew it was going to be, you know, like every time we hit a bump, I'd have a contraction and they were intense. <laughs> so that alone has convinced me that we're for sure doing home births after this. <laughs> Right, just to avoid that drive. That's it. That's just all. To avoid the drive. I hate it so much. Yeah. <laughs> so I was super relieved when we got to the birth center. They had filled up a tub for me because I want to have a water birth this time around. Um, and I walked in, and I just I was kind of surprised how clearly I was thinking. Still, I kind of I kept going over like things that I had learned for teaching classes and stories that people had told me about their experiences so I walked in and I was like I should go sit on the toilet to get this going like let's do this <laughs> so I did I labored on the toilet for a little bit um and then once the tub was ready I got in the tub to labor um still kind of a mixed feeling about giving birth in the water but we'll kind of get to that um they told me that I needed to keep my bottom under the water, mm -hmm. which I wanted to move quite a bit more than that. So that was kind of hard to have to do a certain thing in order to stay in the water. Um, that wasn't, yeah, that wasn't my favorite like position to be in. It wasn't as comfortable as I had hoped it would be. Um, and then the sensations just are different in the water. Like I didn't feel that strong pushing urge quite the same way I had to kind of make myself try it a little bit um but anyway so we were we were there I probably labored in the tub another half hour or so and uh things were so so intense <laughs> and I started feeling um I actually started feeling kind of angry <laughs> which is just funny I was like angry at what contractions felt like you know and uh my husband said he could tell my like the sounds I was making started getting like mad sounding <laughs> and everyone was trying to you know encourage me and cheer me on and it just wasn't really connecting with for me this time like I kind of I still had a bit of that adrenaline feeling um I was angry I was getting getting scared to push because I knew that was going to be so intense um so all of these emotions and then I just remember there was a really cool turning point when my husband prayed for me and just the whole atmosphere of the room changed and I like immediately there was just peace and I was like okay I've got to do it like I can't keep putting this off let's just do this um, this whole time, also, my midwives did not check me. So I had zero exams. Um, I didn't have any exams prenatally either. So awesome. they were just, yeah, and I loved that. They just sat and watched and observed and encouraged me. And I just did everything all on my own. I didn't, nobody coached me to do anything. Nobody told me, like, you're complete. You're ready to push now. Like, nobody told me anything. Mm-hmm is great but it also made me feel a little bit like um a little bit unsure of what was coming next um and somebody just said you know I bet if you wanted to try pushing a little bit you might feel his head <laughs> so sure enough like I reached down 
And um, I just did like a little experimental push just to see. And things started moving after that. So um, I was ready to go. I, I pulled my leg up so that I could be in a lunge because I knew that would be the, well, it's just a great way to give birth. But also I wanted to catch him mm -hmm. in the water. Yeah. So I had my hand all ready and I gave a little push and then I couldn't stop. <laughs> so, so yeah, I pushed him out in one push, even though I was thinking to myself, like, ease back a little bit. Like, it's okay to move slowly. Um, I, I couldn't stop myself. So once I started, he was born in one push into my hands, which wow. was just an incredible experience to be able to catch my baby that was maybe the most special part of the whole thing is mm -hmm. being the first, the first person to hold him you know um so in that way I think a water birth was great it was a super easy way to just be in control of everything that was happening and have that special moment pulling him up onto my chest it was so peaceful it was so different than being in a hospital where there's like bright lights and you know you're trying your best to stay peaceful and everyone around you is like running around there's like beeping and monitoring mm -hmm. and rubbing and <laughs> all of that yep. this one like they they checked vitals really quickly and then they just let me do what I wanted it was so nice that's awesome yeah there you go that's my birth center story. I yeah. loved it. So how long was it? Hard to say. So I did labor all day, technically. I was in pre-labor. Mm -hmm. But from water breaking to him being in my arms was about two hours. Wow. Yeah, that was wow. even faster than I had expected. I thought maybe it would be like four or six hours or something like that. Mm -hmm. but, woo, woo, wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. I love that story. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's awesome. Um, I wish I would, I just wish that we could hear more like awesome, powerful stories, especially hearing from women that they just feel so amazing after birth, you know, I just, yeah. yep. Yeah. It, there's not, there's nothing like it to be able to, to feel everything after the baby is in your arms and to know exactly how you did it and what you're capable of. There's just, there is nothing like that. It's like euphoric. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Special. Yeah. Um, let's talk about postpartum because you said it's been kind of different, especially you've got a little toddler running around now. Um, kind of how's your postpartum been and was it what you expected or not or yeah it's it's very different of course this second time around um one really special thing that was a big deal to me was just being able to go home right after giving birth like we didn't have to stay and get a bunch of tests and exams done we didn't have to stay overnight anywhere we just went home and for me, I know that's not the case for everybody, but I wanted to do that. It just sounded the most peaceful to me. So it was kind of cool to have put our toddler to bed. And then the next morning when he woke up, we were at home mm -hmm. and he got to meet his little brother. Super, super special. Um, I was a little bit more prepared this time to take care of myself physically so I tried really hard to stay in bed for several days, um, stay around the bed, you know, like just not go places or try to work on things or try to do a bunch of chores or anything. Mm -hmm. So initially I just took really good care of myself and my husband, um, my husband really likes to cook. So he was all about making sure I had lots of great nourishing food he took such good care of me and That's he awesome. took of Peter for that whole his whole paternity leave he just it looks a little different with the subsequent kids because mm -hmm. first time you're able to just focus on baby and mama 
and that's kind of dad's job. Yep. The, the next time or times dad's going to take care of the kids and uh, he'll be able, you know, he was able to take care of me and baby a little bit, but it was mostly making sure Peter was cared for and that was his main job. So that felt a little different, not in a bad way, but it was just the new, that's how paternity leave is now. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say, well, I wasn't sure what the night times would feel like because I have done this before. I knew what to expect at nighttime for getting, still getting up every couple of hours and, you know, newborn to just nurse for a very long time. So you're just awake a lot of the, <laughs> of the mm -hmm. nighttime. And there's a huge sleep deprivation. So I wasn't sure if that was going to come maybe a little easier because I had done it before. I wouldn't say it was easier, but I knew what to expect. So that made it easier to cope with. <laughs> yeah. I think that that's what helps a lot. It's just, you know, what's, you know, what's coming, you know, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And you kind of surrender to it a little easier the second time. I think when you have just become a mama and you're, you're kind of going through that, like they call it like matrescence. Yeah. Yeah. You're learning how to be a mom. There's a little bit of like, at least for me, there's like a little bit of fighting. I did at first, like I still want my life to look a lot like it did before and just have a baby involved. But right. actually, you really have to change everything about what you do. And you can't really, life is just not going to look the same. Mm -hmm. You have to surrender to that eventually. That's easier to do with a second baby because you're already there. You're like, life is going to be different now. And here we go. Yep. <laughs> but all that to say, we definitely all had lots of meltdowns. Um, you just, when you're so tired and your hormones are crazy, you just feel things very deeply and they don't always make sense. Um, I remember, I remember the day my milk came in, I just sat in bed with him and just cried just cause I needed to cry. And my husband mm -hmm. said, Hey, is there anything that we can do to like, make this easier for you? Like, what what can I do to help you and I was like I have no idea I just need to cry <laughs> yeah. that's just how it is um I'd say after my husband finished up paternity leave and needed to go back to work it got a little bit difficult at that point just with a toddler as well as a newborn you know you plan as well as you can like, what is your little guy going to do when you're nursing a baby for an hour straight? <laughs> um, there was a lot more getting up with babies still eating mm -hmm. and running around. And yep. I was like fixing lunches and snacks while I was holding Ozzy to nurse him. And <laughs> there's just, it's a lot busier. So I almost the nighttime feedings became a little more special because I didn't always just get to sit and and savor that breastfeeding time with my newborn during the day because mm -hmm. I have to constantly be watching my toddler so that that's a change too of like maybe the nighttime is kind of a special time so that's kind of funny but um yeah it's just a challenge to to introduce a second kiddo that is constant 24 seven maintenance into your family when you've got a really busy and active toddler and you want to do it right so that your toddler accepts his new brother and they become best buddies. Um, so you work on that too. Of like, we want to, we want to make this a great experience for Peter so that he doesn't feel like baby took over his life you know mm -hmm. yeah so he came in stole been, his mom and dad <laughs> exactly that has been something really new to navigate and I feel like my toddler has changed a lot and grown up a lot mm -hmm. which is good but also kind of sad at the same time <laughs> yeah yeah so that has been probably the biggest adjustment is just getting used to what life looks like now I think 
we're all pretty well adjusted now. Ozzy's three months old today. So my fourth trimester has come to a close. <laughs> um, I feel and like we're... there's some wiggle room on that. <laughs> <laughs> my postpartum is not over. That's right. for sure. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely not. But I think we've settled. We've kind of found a bit of a routine every day. There's just nap times happen all day long. So yeah. it's hard. It's hard to leave the house sometimes. But... Right. Yeah. 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 But I'm super proud of my toddler. He has shown a ton of patience and he's just likes to love on his brother. We have to work on being gentle, <laughs> but yeah. he loves, he loves his little brother. So it's, oh, been... that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, that, you actually answered our last questions about being in a groove. You are, you read mm -hmm. our minds. You had everything <laughs> under control. Um, I wanted to bring up, we saw you. We actually got to see you in person with little Ozzy at DulaCon yeah. in September. Um, how did you like it? Yeah, that was actually kind of a fun outing for us. Um so I just packed, you know, it's a newborn, so he sleeps a lot. And I knew he was just going to sleep for most of the time I was at that conference, which is a really, in some ways, that makes that season of life really easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we just packed up and drove down to that. And yeah, sure enough, I just was able to kind of just baby wear him the whole day. He just ate and slept. Um, and it was really fun. It was kind of nice to do something different from my daily routine at that point so that was like I think that was one month after I had him um something close to that yeah so it was just, yeah it was probably it, close it's to yeah. shake things up a little bit and go do a thing and get out of the house meet some new people mm -hmm. I think that for me that is a really healthy thing to do mentally is just to get out of the house talk to other people talk to other adults <laughs> yeah and it kind of is a nice reminder like life is going to feel normal again it's not going to feel the same but it's going to feel normal again and this is part of that journey too so mm -hmm. that was really fun and it was just fun to keep learning and it kind of cast more vision for what I want to do as an instructor and meet and connect with more people in the birth world so that was really cool I mm -hmm. loved it <laughs> yeah it was a lot of fun yeah yeah awesome well fun it was so good to hear your story I know like in your I've seen like in your Instagram posts and stuff that it was fast but I'm like I want to know all the details <laughs> so yeah. yeah yep fast and furious mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean if you don't count your day of early labor I mean that's what we call a precipitous birth right I mean I a flower <laughs> I'm I'm so glad you had that lead up though. So you were a little more mentally prepared. Mm -hmm. I yeah. hear about people who are like, they bam, they go into labor yeah. and then two hours later and I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big shocker. Yeah. yeah. I know. I was trying to decide, like, I really want to be able to call that a precipitous labor because that's just awesome. I mean, I would, I would I totally would. Yeah. do that. Yeah. Because I mean, I didn't go into active like labor until after your water broke mm -hmm. right yeah. yeah all right well then I'm gonna call it that yeah I would <laughs> <laughs> yep awesome well this is so fun we love talking to you so oh, thanks, thanks for for sharing your story with us and yeah will you tell people where they can find you real quick yep so my website is saplingbirth.com um, I've got some upcoming in-person classes happening in January that I'm super excited about. Um, and you can also find me on Instagram. It's at Sapling Birth Services on Instagram and Facebook. So they can find me there. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks so much. Thank um, you. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining everybody and for, and for listening. Um, be sure that you stay tuned and we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye.